that the person called Jesus is the savior of mankind is certainly a part of the imaginary world. To that extent, this concept is part of the real world. It's not mine to know. When I first arrived among the Indians of Central America, they treated me as a god, even though I am only a space-time traveler from the future civilization on Venus. This attitude of theirs allowed me an opportunity to set up a system of thought such that a record of my visit would remain in your history. Making use of the existing local gods, I drew up a manuscript which contained advanced scientific knowledge in the form of a code within a code. The reason for proceeding in this manner may be understood if one thinks on the nature of the matter world. If I had merely given the information to the natives, it would have either been lost or my visit would have become part of someone else's history, not my own. If, on the other hand, I had only expressed it as a code, some ingenious person probably would have cracked it and long before discovery of such knowledge would normally have occurred. As it was, the chosen few who I called priests were only too glad to know the first code and never dreamt that the second even existed. My only regret is that evil forces were later able to capitalize on my drawings by convincing the natives to emulate them and so engage in human sacrifice. The first code tells the same story as that found in the Bible, creation, fall, and redemption of man, plus gives details, astronomical tables of great accuracy. The many observatories built by the natives were not for deriving such tables, but for the purpose of allowing them to be put to use. We see here the images that are tables of astronomical observations. They have been decoded and proven that the Mayans had very precise knowledge of the motion of the Earth, Venus, the Moon, and perhaps other planets also. The dots and bars represent the number system and the snake represents time passage. The second code may be cracked by making use of the arbitrary starting date of the first code's chronology of August 12, 3113 BC. Because of the prior existence of Atlantis, the countries of the world have inherited a common zodiac of the heavens, such that various groups of stars are imagined to form pictures. If one examines the heavens as of the exact date stated against a backdrop of the glyphs arranged in a certain manner, the universe non-verbal meaning of the glyphs will be disclosed. The text of the manuscripts will then describe the hidden second meaning of the ideograms which is a theory of physics called the O hypothesis put forth in the present age. The author claims only to have decoded a portion of the pictures, not the textual or glyph part. A key lies that a key lies in the accepted unique starting date of the Mayan chronology of 3113 BC in conjunction with the zodiac is only a suggestion. I would have preferred not to have had to come back the second time, but such was necessitated when it was realized that despite of the rapid advance in physics, no one with the proper antimatter matter brain balance was going to arise who could crack the second code at the appropriate time. Some may say, are you not now interfering in your own self history? No, the earth civilization will be completely destroyed by a transition within the sulfur atom long before the Venus civilization reaches the point from which I came, and the records of such will not be understood until the time from which I came, 
for despite all our attempts to interfere, the universal laws of physics are obeyed one way or another, if not in the real world, then in the imaginary. You will find in the second code a description of the space-time machine that I arrived in during the first visit. It is disguised as a throne. These types of machines were later used by evil forces and evil men, and created such havoc that the council forbade the use of one for my second visit. Consequently, I had to employ a means that was rather drastic, but of which I am not at present free to discuss. Cracking of the second code will leave no doubt as to its validity, for the O hypothesis will be shown to be explained in detail. Further, knowledge which the Mayans simply could not have possessed will be displayed therein. This is the space-time machine, which Quetzalcoatl is shown adjusting with some special tools. There is a valid evidence to support the traditional interpretation that the object in Quetzalcoatl's right hand is a sacrificial knife, and the object in his left hand is a bloody heart with arterial stuffs, or a flaming torch. As warned previously, the author will not consider this as a contradicting another meaning. The position shall be that the one is dealing with the code within the code. Although this space-time machine could not be located in any Mayan carvings, it plays a dominant role in the manuscripts. On the basis of the other drawings and a concept of its function, the author suggests that this Asur throne of the gods may have actually looked as sketched below. A special liquid is prepared which contains all nucleons of a given size corresponding to that galaxy, sample universe at an instant to which one wishes to travel. This liquid is then poured into the container at the top. Before sitting in the device, the motor is wound up by the racket as shown in the Quetzalcoatl's left hand, and any old liquid left over from the previous strip is removed from the hanging reeds by the syringe as shown in his right hand. Quetzalcoatl then sits in the machine and turns on the motor by using the controls at the base. The motor then causes the feeder, shown with three wavy lines, to force the liquid down the hanging reeds. This produces a shower of nucleons around the occupant in simulation of a giant brain that is, one is now able, with his imagination alone, to transfer not only the mind but the entire body through time and space to the galaxy selected. Note that it is conceivable that the motor of the space-time machine need operate for only a few seconds to accomplish its task, since there is no evidence from the manuscripts that Quetzalcoatl understood electricity, the author proposes it to be a rubber band motor, which I here can give a smile to my suggestion, and I can ask, why not? Care must be taken to ensure that the imagination is focused on the current galaxy, and this is symbolized by indicating in the other drawings the space-time traveler holding in his lap the correct galaxy enlarged. Briefly, we can examine these plates. To understand what is occurring in general, we see in the lower portion of these other plates, through the middle of the pictures is drawn a giant horizontal snake for spaces wide. The small circular glyphs which cover the giant snake represent identically days, nucleons, and the universe at various instances of galaxies. That this arrangement is the Mayan calendar is not questioned. Again, the author adds additional meanings to those accepted by authorities. One might hope that these glyphs represent also various elements which, after all, are only particular resonant 
state of the expanding universe. Note that they, nucleon, galaxy, element have the common denominator of B points in space time. To refer to this plate, the Mayan calendar system has already been decided. One dot equals one, two dots equals two, three dots equals three, four dots equals four, one bar equals five, and one bar and a dot equals six, etc. If the glyphs are also elements, it is conceivable that such a table is of chemical compounds. So many of these elements, so many of that. The woman at the bottom is identifiable as the Mayan goddess of suicide. Anyone hanging themselves was considered certain of going directly to heaven. But was this the original meaning of joy? Four smaller snakes are helically wound around the single large snake. Two of the smaller snakes are traveling forward in time to the right. Note carefully this graphic. The normal motion through space-time of the snake would be helically one day after another. Space-time travel by the machine, however, requires an abrupt shift in the snake's position. This is accomplished symbolically by placing the pig astride the snake and causing it to jump ahead by using a torch, which is identically the implement used in, in this graphic right to wind up the motor. The previous hinges on clearly defining the nature of snake involved, the snake represents man's sense of self-awareness. Authorities recognize that the Mayans to this present day look at the universe in a manner unique to the peoples of the earth. The Mayan considered space-time to be a static structure through which an individual moves during his life. More precisely, that each person is born attached, so to speak, to his own personal segment that he must experience, and this is represented by the snake. The author, however, goes further and says that this snake, in the deeper sense, is a track of self-awareness, for according to the old hypothesis, Without the phenomena of self-awareness, the snake as a living thing does not exist. Although the stylization varies, each person's individual snake can be seen attached to the head in many of the drawings and the carvings as well. Examine, for example, this graphic. I will now explain the process whereby man becomes self-aware. For example, is able to experience the sense of time. When we examine this graphic, the upper left of the dog's head, there is a disembodied brain with a self-awareness operation taking place. On top of that angle is a comb with some of the teeth missing. This represents a discriminating filtering mechanism which is being applied to the nucleons of the universe as an instance just below. These nucleons are shown as identical except for one oblong one. With the aid of the filtering mechanism, the oblong one is selected. As will be seen in the center portion is a stylized snake head. To the right is the selecting arm and to the left is an, is an intake valve to bring the nucleus from the environment. Just below the snake of awareness are two accumulated identical nucleons and then the brain with its two halves. The O hypothesis requires that the selection process occurs on the basis of relative size, not shape. This implies that while the Mayan originators of the drawings understood the function of the brain's self-awareness mechanism, they were not aware of the expansion of the universe. Such would be easily be for in order to detect the expansion, one must detect the red shift. One must be familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum of atoms. The author seems no reason why a society might not develop an advanced state of chemistry at the expense of understanding atomic spectra. Indeed, what need for electricity or atom smashes if transmutation of elements can be done by mixing so much of this and so much of that. We have two glyph symbols that suggest 
exactly this process. 